Now, the African National Congress, ANC, South Africa's historic ruling party, has suspended its Secretary General, Ace Magashule, on corruption charges in a letter written to him by the ANC Deputy Secretary General, Jesse Duarte, informing him about the party's decision. Duarte says during the suspension, Magashule cannot do his duties and responsibility as the Secretary General of the party, nor represent the ANC in public or any other forum. He is also barred from mobilizing the party structures and any organization or individuals. He also added that Magashule is required to update the office of the Secretary General on a monthly basis regarding the progress of his case, adding that the decision to temporarily suspend him will be reviewed by the NEC. This is the National Executive Committee every six months from time to time at his request. For more on this, political editor at the Southern African Times, Brian Lunga, joins us now. Brian, good to have you to clarify uh, much that is uh, not very clear on this issue. Now, maybe let's start here. Is Magashule being made a scapegoat? Uh, because some might be wondering what has led to the ANC drawing a line in the sand at this time? I mean, that is credible speculation to think that he is being made a scapegoat. Of course, this comes at a wake where a national inquiry is going, ongoing right now in South Africa, um, the state capture national inquiry. Um, this inquiry is surrounding a lot of corruption that has happened at a national level within um, the country. Now, whether he's being made a scapegoat now still remains up in the air as we try and see where the dynamics of all of this uh, are shifting to. Um, a lot of things are in play at the moment, politically, power-wise, and of course, corruption charges-wise. So we're still waiting to see, will he be made a scapegoat, or is this the ANC already mobilizing to um, work around their election year? Because this is an election year within the ANC. So again, that's another interesting factor that comes into it. There's a lot of dynamics at play at this at the moment. Indeed. But that, that temporary suspension also came with some sort of a ban. Uh, he was barred from carrying out any functions of his office as Secretary General. He's not allowed to engage in mobilization of the party structures, including on matters related to his stepping aside process, amongst other things. But this did not stop him from writing a letter sacking the president of the party, Cyril Ramaphosa. What is exactly going on here? How valid is this? I think, I think, again, we're throwing in that power mix and we're throwing in the election mix, mm -hmm. that there's elections happening within the ANC um, this year. And Secretary General is one of the most powerful um, positions within the party. And no one wants to let that go. And at the moment, what we are seeing is Ace Mahashule saying, I'm not ready to leave the party under your uh, terms. I want to leave on my terms if I am to leave. Um, I don't think he's willing to leave anytime soon, and I don't think he's going to leave quietly. And this is what he's showing. But incidentally, that has weakened him. It hasn't really uh, helped his cause because everyone around him is looking around and thinking, well, why should I rally behind him if he has been suspended and he has no power to suspend anybody? Let's also um, take into consideration that 30 other party members within the NC were suspended alongside um, Ace Mahashule. So there's a lot of dynamics at play here. And Ace Mahashule is trying to flex his muscles to show that he's still powerful within the NC. But I think if you really look deep into it, he has weakened himself more than anything else. Okay, I'm curious, might you know what uh, the position of Ramaphosa is on Ace Mahashule's flexing his muscles, as you put it? Um, <laughs> you know, why has he made Ramaphosa a target? Um, if he wanted to uh, suspend Ramaphosa, he should have done this before he was suspended. And I think this is where the critical part comes in. What has he been waiting for if he feels that Ramaphosa had a few issues ongoing that were, uh, could lead to suspension? What was he waiting for? And I think now what we're seeing here is a case of a man who is trying by all means to uh, hold on and consolidate power within the party as much as possible. Um, it has been ongoing in the media circles within South Africa and the social circles within South Africa that Cyril Ramaphosa and Ace Mahashule were not seeing eye to eye. And maybe now 
we are starting to see that maybe there is some credibility to um, what has been going on within the social circles and the media circles. So it sounds like power struggle going on, but there's been so much alleged corruption and malfeasance within the ranks of the ANC. And this is not the first time it's come into light. Uh, would you say that the ANC still, you know, still has that moral compass to clean up itself? Or is this just that power struggle we're talking about? And what are the implications for the party going into elections? I think what we're starting to see now is probably maybe a, a situation where the ANC has to clean its act. Otherwise, I believe, on a speculative perspective, on a personal opinion, I believe that if the ANC does not clean up its act anytime soon, all they'll do is simply requenish power and give it to the likes of uh, the EFF that are coming along and strengthen um, other bases within the DA party as well. So I think they have to clean up uh, their act because they have not been gaining a lot of popularity of late. And as I mentioned earlier on, with the state inquiry going on at the moment into um, state capture, it's important that the ANC stands firm against corruption. And maybe this is what we're seeing here. We are seeing a party that's saying we are standing firm on corruption. If you have been charged by the court of law, please step aside and we will clean up our act in, 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 inward rather than get anyone from outside to clean up the, our, our act in terms of get the courts involved to clean up our act within. So I think now they're cleaning in inward, getting everything outward as quickly as possible so that they can have a bit more power over the next coming few years. There is an election happening in South Africa over the next three years. One might be inclined to think maybe there's a campaign of some sort going on. And again, let's not forget the regional implications of the ANC. The ANC is one of the most powerful parties within Southern Africa. And if the ANC is going through turmoil, other parties that have been with, through the liberation movement in Zano PF in Zimbabwe will probably also be looking around saying, what do we learn from this? How do we consolidate our power? Where do we move forward from this? And again, there's the economic um, impact. When the NC go through all these uh, situations, there is an in economic impact that happens. Sometimes the rand does suffer a little bit. So we wait to see. Um, the NC are meeting this weekend. That meeting will determine the direction of where the NC goes and indeed where the region goes as well. Thank you, Brian Lunga, for that. I'm sure you'll keep your eye on that story for us.